All right, here we go. We're going to start the Lego project, and this is going to be the very first piece you're going to make. Uh, and we're going to start with the 2x4, which is one of the most standard pieces in the Lego set. Um, now, what you need to understand about this is every dimension you're going to use for this project is going to be a fraction, usually something between 1 32nd all the way up to 32 30 seconds, which is just one whole. If you find yourself entering dimensions that are decimals, you might be doing something wrong. So try to stick to fractions, and if you're not sure exactly what to use, make sure you check with one of your peers or with the teacher. Um, so we're going to get you started. The software we're going to be using for this LEGO project is called SOLIDWORKS. It's a new icon. should be on all the computers now. Uh, it's the 2018 version of SOLIDWORKS. So you're going to want to go ahead and click on that and open it up. <clears throat> Once you do open it up, it's going to look like this. And what you're going to notice is that it looks, it's going to look familiar. It's going to be very similar to what you used on Autodesk Inventor. Okay, for the Lego project, we're going to start out by making parts. And once you have lots of parts put together, you can start to put together, or designed, then you can start to put together your assemblies. So we're going to go up here to this little new icon. You can click on it, or you can just hit the arrow, um, and you'll click new. Just like the other software you use, you can create parts, assemblies, and drawing files. Obviously, we need to start with a part file first. So we'll go ahead and open up that part file. Okay. For the Lego. We're going to start uh, by making the bottom base of this, that rectangular face first, and then we're going to extrude it up. Then we'll add the knobs, then we're going to shell it out and add those little cylinders underneath. Okay. So once we get into our uh, part file, we can click here on Sketch, and we're going to say we want to do a sketch. We're going to pick a plane. We're going to go and design on this top plane right here, and I'm going to use a rectangle. And I'm going to make a rectangle that looks something like a Lego base. Now, we don't have any dimensions yet, so proportionally it may be ginormous or tiny. Uh, we don't know. So I'm going to go on to Smart Dimension. Now, here's the thing you're going to have to know. A Lego width, a standard Lego width, is 5 sixteenths of an inch, which means for a double piece like this, if it's two Lego widths, it's going to be 10 sixteenths, which is the same thing as 5 eighths. So we can just say 5 eighths, or you could say 10 sixteenths, and we'll say enter. And it's now going to put that in. Now it says 0.63. It's not really 0.63. It's actually 0.625. And if I expanded this, it would show that. But it, it likes to round it off just for the display. It's actually correct, 0.625. And we want this to be twice that. So if a double was 5 eighths, then a full length would be 10 eighths, which is 1 and a quarter. Uh, but we'll just type in 10 eighths, say enter, and there's our Lego base right there. That is the size of that bottom rectangle. So now we're going to go to features, and we're going to extrude this. Now a standard Lego height is 3 eighths of an inch tall. And what you're going to see, if I have three of the flat pieces, it's exactly the same height as a single normal piece. Okay, so these are each 1 eighth, so you have 1 eighth, 1 eighth, 1 eighth, which equals 3 eighths, or you have a standard Lego piece that's 3 eighths tall. So when we extrude this guy, we're going to give it a dimension of 3 eighths of an inch. And what's fun about SOLIDWORKS, if you just click on the screen, it's going to give you the display. It's going to give you a preview before you actually accept. So that looked good, so we're going to accept it. And there's our Lego brick. Okay, so now we're going to go create a knob on top. So we put a new sketch. This yellow box right here is saying, hey, the next face you choose is where we're going to put that sketch. So I haven't clicked on anything yet, but I'm going to click on this top face because that's where I want the sketch to be. And if I want to look directly at that top face, I can go right here to this view orientation and I can click and here's my six standard views. And if I say I want to look right at this top face, it's going to look right at it. I'm going to take a circle. <clears throat> and I'm just going to throw a circle on there. It's not perfect, but it will be. We'll go to Smart Dimension. And if a standard Lego width is 5 sixteenths, then we want to make sure the distance from the center point to the edge is exactly half of that, which would be 5 30 seconds. And I want to do the exact same thing this way. 5 30 seconds. Okay. Now, we want to give this knob the appropriate diameter, which is going to be 3 
sixteenths. Now this is a lot of fractions, and you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, I have no idea what he's even using. But what you'll see is that for all the Legos, regardless of what you're making, even if you're making this crazy piece right here, all the dimensions are standardized. And what that does is that makes sure that everything matches up correctly. All your edges are flush and all your knobs fit in the right place. So right now you'll just have to trust me and say, okay, Mr. Katie says it is these dimensions. Once you've made 10 or 15 pieces, you're gonna get really good at knowing what the dimensions have to be. So it's 3 16 the diameter. And now we're gonna go ahead and extrude this up. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go back and switch it to uh, an isometric view just so I can see it. And that's what it looks like. And we're going to bring it up 1 16th of an inch. It defaulted to 3 8 because that's the height I put this Lego brick at, but that is not how tall we want the knob to be. It's going to be 1 16th. And if I click out here in preview, and that looks really good. So we'll say yes, accept. Now I don't really want to go make seven more knobs, and I'm not going to. I'm going to use a linear pattern. And if you look under here, you're going to see linear, circular, mirror, all the different features that you're already probably familiar with. So we're going to say linear pattern. And the first thing is going to be what do we want to pattern? Okay, features and faces that we want to uh, select for this. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to say, hey, this feature right here, which is a knob. And the direction, we, now, we need to have two directions. So for direction one, I'll click this edge. And I'm going to say, nope, I wanted it to switch to direction. I only wanted two of them. And if you remember me saying a Lego spacing is 5 sixteenths, I'll put in 5 sixteenths, and that's exactly where the other knob should go. Now I'm not going to hit enter yet because I need to go to direction two. And I'm going to choose this edge. And I'm going to say I want, right now it says one, so you don't see any pattern, but I'm going to say I want four of them. And I want them to go the other direction by clicking on this little arrow switch. And I want the spacing to be, what should it be? Five sixteenths. And it's going to look just like that. Now we'll say, okay, there's our Lego with the bricks on top, or the knobs on top. Okay, now well, here's what's great about SolidWorks. If you push down on the dial, on your mouse, you can actually orbit your piece. And I'm going to go to a feature called Shell. And I'm going to click this bottom face because I'm going to shell. That means it's going to hollow it out. And it's going to leave it with this thickness. Well, I need that thickness to be 1 16th of an inch. And so we'll say, OK. And now it shelled it. And what's really cool is it already put those little divots in underneath. And if you look at your Lego piece that I have you using, you're going to notice it's got divots in it, just like that. Um, and it'll do that as long as you made the knobs on top first. Uh, that's really important because it doesn't seem like it's saving a lot of plastic. But when Lego's producing 10 billion of these bricks, it does save a lot of plastic. And that's money. Okay, the only thing we still need are the little tubes they go in here and there'll be three of them and then we're done with this part. So we're going to go to a new sketch. We can do this one of two ways. We can sketch on this bottom face inside here or we can sketch on this face here. One way will be extruding out and one way will be extruding in. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and sketch on this face in here. I'm going to orbit it a little bit just so I can see or like I showed you before if you want. We're looking at the bottom face now. And I'm going to throw a circle right in here, about like that. Now, I don't know how big I want this circle to be yet, but I do know some things. I know the distance from that center point to the edge should be one Lego width, which is going to be 5 sixteenths. So I'll hit Enter. And I also know the distance from the center point to the left edge should also be 5 sixteenths. So at least now it's in the right place, but it's not the right size and it's going to be solid. So what we need to do is we need to add a second circle that's concentric, which means it has the same center point right there. And I do know the size of it. It's inside diameter needs to be the exact same size as one of the knobs that was on top here so that a knob will fit snugly right into it. Snugly, that's a technical term. Um, and if we put in 3 sixteenths, for the inside diameter, then it is correct. Now, the tricky part is how big does this outside diameter need to be? Well, we're gonna use a relation. 
So if we click this little arrow and say add relation, these are the constraints that we can apply to different parts of our design. So I'm going to say add relation. I'm going to click on that outside circle. And what I really want to click on is the circle, that's the knob right above here. Now there's probably a way to get that to project. So if I go to convert entities, no, it's not going to want to work for me, I don't think. Okay, what we're going to do instead of convert entities, all right, just kidding. We're not going to use convert en entities until I figure out how it actually works. Uh, we're going to close that. We're going to draw a new circle. And we're going to put it right on that center point, and we're going to have it come tangent right out to this edge, because that's where a knob is going to fit. Just like the knob that's above this thing, that's where a knob is going to be able to fit into the underneath part of this thing also. So now we're going to go to add relation, and we're going to, I'm going to clear this out, because these are the things we're adding to, which it is correct, that is what I want, but just to show you, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally select something wrong in there. So I'm going to click this arc, and I want it and this arc. If I choose those two, these are all the relations I can add to them. And tangent is the one that I actually want. So I'm going to say I want them to be tangent to one another. And you'll see that the outside circle of this is now perfectly tangent with where a knob is going to fit in there. That means it's the exact dimension that I want it to be. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and extrude this area. And I want it to come up, if I choose blind, that's going to allow me to apply a distance for the extrusion. I'm going to say up to surface. And now I need to specify that surface is right here. And if I say OK, hmm. Okay, um, I'm not sure exactly where I left off right there, but we're going to use up to surface. We're going to make sure that our selected contour is this ring right here. If you didn't select that, make sure you do. And if you accidentally select the wrong thing, you can right click in here and clear out your selections. And we're going to click this little pink area right here, which is the face that it's going to go up to. So if I click on that, you'll see that it's going to extrude up to that face and we'll accept. So we didn't even know, need to know exactly what the distance was there. It came perfectly flush with this top face. Now all we have to do is pattern this. We're going to go here um, for our uh, features to pattern. We're going to pick this guy. For our direction, we're just going to use one. And any of these lines that cut across there, we want three occurrences. And based on our last uh, linear pattern, it put in 5 sixteenths, which is this decimal right here. And that is correct. That is the spacing we want for those cylinders. So we'll say OK. And we now have a complete Lego brick. This is the 2 by 4 brick. And all we have to do now is apply a color to it. So if we go to Edit Appearance, you can click on that. Over here, you've got your RGB, all your red, green, and blue values, which means you've got about 16 million different colors you can choose from. And so go ahead and pick the color that's most appropriate for the part you're building, because you probably need this part. And uh, go ahead and save your part. And you are done with the 2 by 4 Go ahead and get your grade check and move on to the next piece. I also recommend when you save this, create a folder. If you haven't already, have a folder called ninth grade. Have another folder called engineering. And then you should create a new folder called the Lego project. And inside the Lego project, start saving all your pieces because you're going to probably have at least 20 or 30 different parts that you're designing, uh, not to mention your assemblies. Some students end up closer to 100 different Lego parts. So make sure you stay organized. All right.